Bear warning for any actual mathematicians that are going to watch this video, I will complete many acts of heresy as far as math goes so that the average person can understand how the math is mathing. All right, everyone. So I'm going to go over how drop rates actually work inside of everything. It is going to be a very heavy math video. If you want to skip the math, I give you all shortcuts with a website. You can skip to the timestamp that says distribution, and that will tell you everything you need to know without learning any math. But if you're interested in, in not only how to calculate how many people it's going to take to run certain things, but also how many missions it will take on average for people to acquire five ultimates at another timestamp called ultimates. So if you're only interested in these two things, please go to those two things. Everything else is essentially a video game math lesson. If you have a friend with absolute abysmal drop rates, you can share this with them in hopes that they glean some insight in why their drop rates are so abysmal. And if they feel alone, they might actually be because that's how statistics works. Next video, maybe I'll have better lighting. Today, drop rates. So most of you may be familiar with South Korea's Games Act of March of 2023. So specifically outlined in this act is the fact that their country has to release the drop rates of loot boxes or items purchasable in the store menu. This is the case whenever you're dealing with things that you can purchase. So there are certain modules that can be purchased inside of the shop. I do not know if this would make them voice those modules specifically as accurate. However, all of the drop rates from missions and combining, they do not have to technically be accurate, mostly because you do not have to purchase them. The reason that they did this, the South Korea Games Act only counts things that you have to purchase or something that comes out of a loot box that you have to purchase. So technically anything that can be acquired in the game and anything that can be acquired in the loot box if they are linked then their drop rates have to be accurate. They do not face fines, they do not face penalties for incorrectly reporting drop rates on mission items. So that being said, I do think the drop rates are accurate, at least for the most part. Nexon did release something that says the global rates for drops are accurate. There's two problems with this. One, we have been lied to before by Nexon. Look up Maple Story and the drop rates and Nexon, you'll find it. They did face a $9 million lawsuit because of this. The second problem, there is something called variable drop rates that could exist, but we don't know exists. And the problem is testing this is basically impossible unless I have 100,000 viewers that are all willing to crowdsource their information in information that I could trust and sparse it into an online shareable document which we could do, but that would be a lot of work for everyone, especially me. But in order for that to happen, I would need about 90,000 more subscribers. A variable drop rate would be something like, if you have more friends on your friends list, you get increased drops. This sounds ridiculous, but there's a reason they were sued for $9 million. So I'll be going forward, assuming that Nexon is not lying in that they don't have variable drop rates, and even though they didn't open source their data collection and give it all to us like honest humans, sorry for the interruption, I give you dog. Oof. Going forward, there is something called the Bernoulli mathematical formula to calculate the amount of successes versus non-successes in three different groups of categories. It was created by a man named Bernoulli, who looks exactly how you think he looks. Inside are three different equations. Fair warning, this will get a little math heavy, but, but I will try my best to tailor it to people that are not math savvy. You'll be able to understand this. So that being said, we have the binomial, geometric, and negative binomial expressions. The binomial expression on drop rates will essentially tell you how likely it is you're the guy that has to run a thousand runs to do the thing. Geometric expression will tell you how many people had to run the mission to get their first success. And then the negative binomial is going to tell you the number of runs you'll have to complete given a drop rate or the number of successes that you'll need to acquire that drop rate. Now, negative binomial might sound daunting because you have no idea what negative binomial means coming from a syntax standpoint. 
I will simplify the concepts of binomial, negative, and geometric first. So first, we have the word binomial. Bi means two. Nomial is an expression on the word nominal. This word just means that you're acquiring something inside of this format. Nominal would be something like a person or a thing. All of binomial means is two things. And in this format, binomial expression is just you succeeding or not succeeding. In this case, drop rates. You either get the drop or you don't get the drop. Binomial. But actually, we will be skipping the binomial because you don't need it. With the binomial expression, you would need to know the number of runs and the number of successes to give you the probability that you had to be the guy to go through that. This is pretty much useless outside of the 80 people out of 10,000 that had to do a something. So someone would have to have calculated the amount of runs they had to do for the amount of successes that they retrieved to get the probability that they are the guy that had to do that. But what I'm really interested in is the probability of the drop rates and how many runs that someone would have to do to get the item. Because that is what everyone is worried about. So first we're gonna actually do geometric. And this will give you the probability on the number of runs for the first reward clear. It will come out in the form of a graph, which I will give to y'all. And then I will link a calculator to where you can automatically just go look at the probability of the people having to run the things. So we'll start with the first part of the formula, E, which just stands for probability. Probability in this case is not your drop rate, it's the probability that you're the guy that had to do the thing. This portion is the number of runs till the first drop occurs. So the, the two variables in this format, so going forward, we're going to have values for these items. We will be using a drop rate of 0.25. We'll have two letters in this formula, an X and a K. This little X is going to equal K because you'll need it. This P and this P are different P's. This is your solving of an equation for P and the, the P inside of the equation is going to be for the drop rate. It sounds confusing at first, but I got you. So here we have the first part of our equation, P, e. The probability is going to equal 1 minus our drop rate, 0.25, which gives us 0.75. The next part of our formula is going to be 0.75 to the power of k, which we will say that k equals 4 runs. k equals 4 runs. So it will be to the power of 4 minus 1 which is three. So far, we have P equals 0.75 to the power of three. Then we will have to multiply this by our drop rate or our little p, which is 0.25. So the odds that you get your drop on exactly the fourth run, not the first, second, or third, but the fourth is roughly a 10% chance. Equal to or less than the fourth run is going to be the odds of the fourth run plus the odds of the third run, plus the odds of the second run, plus the odds of the first run. So unfortunately, there is not a way to tell what the odds of having to do four or less than four runs in order to get your value without calculating the third run, the fourth run, the second one, and the first run, adding them together, and then multiplying it by this version of the formula. But I just wanted to show you this in order so that you got an understanding of the formula that is happening. Now I will just spoon feed you the website to plug your number in. And here we have the website for the automated calculations. Just so that you're aware, there are going to be two different geometric distribution calculators online. One is using the Bernoulli process and one is using another process. The Bernoulli process is specifically tailored to success and failures, so please use that one. Or this one, which of course it will be in the link in the description. I apologize for being all up in the camera's face. First we'll have the probability of the fourth success. This is on the fourth success, not before the fourth success. Then we will have the probability of the fourth success and lower. So this is really your probability this 0.68, which basically means you have a 70% chance to acquire a 25% drop rate item out of four runs. 
And then we have the probability of the 20th run. So I am sorry for you if you are one of the 32 people in 10,000 people that could not acquire this until the 20th run. But it has to happen to somebody and better you than me. So if you're interested, this is the distribution. A distribution in this sense just means that this is a table of all of the rates and everything added up into it before the previous rate. If you'll see on this list, you'll see that on the fourth rate, you still have the 68% chance to not need to run it a fifth time. I hope this helps you. And if this is all everyone is interested in, this is what you came here for. So the other one, the negative binomial distribution. This one I'm not really going to go over in depth because the formula is quite expansive and it gets really confusing. But don't worry about the formula regardless. If you want to look at it, this is it. I will take you to a web page that automatically calculates the distribution and gives you a graph of where you would fall inside of the charts. This is the best way to look at it. The web page is doing math a little bit differently than Bernoulli did it, but it's the only one that I actually like, so it's close enough for our purposes. So unfortunately, if you want a fully maxed perforator, this guy, the majority of people will be able to get it in 70 runs with the 0.1 openable amorphous materials to open 122. Five perforators. The perforator blueprint has a 10% drop chance on the amorphous material 122. I need five of them. So instead of 50 runs, so if I need five perforators, and I have to do the quest 100 times to gather five perforators, which almost everyone would not have to do that. I would need a total of 100 122s. Each of these have a 0.25% drop chance. And whenever we're talking about large numbers, it probably is accurate. So I'll probably have to do 400 stealth missions to acquire 100 122s. In order to open 100 122s, I would need 3,600 Void Shards, which is 180 Void Shard missions, assuming I'm doing the most bang for my buck. So basically, I need 180 Void Shard missions, 400 Stealth missions, and 100 Void Fusion React openers to get five perforators almost guaranteed. Most likely, it will actually be half of this for the grinding, assuming my drop rates aren't actually the worst. So most likely, four or five perforators, I have to perform 340 total missions, assuming I'm doing it as efficiently as possible. So if you really want to figure out how to do the most bang for your buck, pick out an ultimate that you actually want and then max it out. And while you're maxing it out, get descendants that you want to level up. Switch Descendants whenever you can. You won't always have the option to switch Descendants whenever you're doing the Void Shards, which are about one third of your total work. So pick the Elemental Descendant that you want the most for the Void Shard mission that you need the most for the ultimate weapon that you want five of. This is useful. And this will save you a lot of time and i will probably do a separate video on this just save everyone so much time and irritation probably multiplying the farming needs by four so somewhere between 340 and 680 missions you will acquire all of the ultimates that you want however if we're talking large scale numbers it will almost always be 340 because that's how statistics works the larger the population size the more averaged your average is. There are 21 ultimate weapons, and if you want to max out all 21 of them, good luck. You'll get all of the catalyzation shards that you need before you do that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go spend the next six hours editing the scrap. Have a sick day. Peace out.